Whose idea was it to have a census anyway? A census. Now, I'm not begrudging the work or the money, but this, this is insanity. A full inn, I've got people sleeping on every flat surface. Well, I can't take another soul, that's for sure. I guess I better catch some sleep while I can, wherever I can. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Go away, the inn is full. Oh. I said it's full, can't you hear? Oh, hello. I'm sorry, the inn is full. Please, sir. I have nowhere to put you. Uh, what would you have me do, son? It's just my wife. Please, sir. Our baby's coming soon and we have no place to go. And I have no place to put you. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just I have no more rooms. I, I have no more space. I'm sleeping here on the floor as it is. Maybe you could try down the road a ways. There is no place else. You are our last hope. Mary, we will have to head outside of the city and try to find some place on the hills. We need to hurry then. Well, wait, um, let's not be too hasty. Um, if you're not too particular or fussy, I do have a stable. It's chock full of animals right now, but we could clear you out a little space and you could settle there and at least it's indoors if you'd like. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, follow me. divided the sea from the land before the creator bring life into man he spoke the words that the world shattered not this is the story of life the sun and the moon and the stars took their place as if god had given creation a taste of what was to come on that Bethlehem night. This is the story of life. This is the story of light. Of the world, of all the ages, God sent His Son to the darkness to save us. the manger, the stable, the swaddling clothes. But what God was saying that Bethlehem night was this, this is the story of life. This is the story of life.
Well, that'll do it, I guess. I don't see where it's right or proper, but it was just the best that I could do. Well, now to catch that long overdue sleep. <sighs> There is no rest for the weary. <sighs> Quit your banging, the inn is full. You're looking for who? No, there's no Messiah here. What do you mean coming and banging on my door in the middle of the night? I don't care if you did see angels. What have you guys been doing out in that field? It sure hasn't been watching sheep. No, there's no babe in swaddling clothes in a... Wait, a manger? I don't believe it. Well, this way.
That night, the shepherds had said he was something special. The angels had told them so. But that kid hadn't looked so special to me. But I couldn't stop thinking about them. After a few days, I decided to go to the temple and do some research and find out about the real Messiah. You will never guess who I saw there. Yep, Mary and Joseph, the same young couple that had wound up in my stable that night. Apparently, they had named the baby boy Jesus. He was there too. They were going to the temple to dedicate their son. I sat there and watched from the side and everything seemed to be normal. You would think that if he was the Messiah or a king, someone would have noticed. But no, no one seemed to notice. Those shepherds were crazy, all right. Maybe they'd been out in the field with their sheep a little too long. There didn't seem to be anything special about that kid. But as I was on my way out, an old man nearly ran me over. He was moving faster than any man his age ought to be moving. He was half laughing, half singing. It's time. I can't wait to see him, he said. He pushed his way through the crowd straight to Mary and Joseph. When he saw the baby, he began to weep with joy. I don't remember the exact words he said, but it was something like, my name is Simeon. God told me about this baby. God promised me I would not die until I had held the Messiah, and I've been waiting. you'll find peace 
salvation Cause he's the light of the Gentiles And the glory of his people Simeon asked Mary if he could hold the baby. With tears in his eyes, he held the baby and looked up towards heaven and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Mary and Joseph just watched the man with the baby. They were quiet and thoughtful, like they already knew. Something was going on here. First angels, then shepherds, and now Simeon. I decided right then and there that I was going to search the scriptures and find any prophecies, any mention of the Messiah. If God had told Simeon about the Messiah, wouldn't he have told others as well? Maybe some of the old prophets, like Isaiah or Moses. I began to study the scriptures for clues about the Messiah. Where he would be born? When? What kind of person he would be? My life was changed when I saw that Every prophecy made about the birth and the life of the Messiah was being fulfilled during my lifetime. Tonight, I'd like to share that with you. God spoke to many men through dreams and revelations. Some he even spoke with face to face. The first prophet that I found that spoke of the Messiah was Moses. God told Moses many things, which he then recorded. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. You see, Moses prophesied that God would send a king from the nation of Israel and the tribe of Judah. John, a disciple of Christ, wrote the book of Revelations, the last book in the Bible. He recorded the words of Christ exactly as Christ had spoken them. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Did you catch that? Moses prophesied that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David from the tribe of Judah. And Jesus himself said that's the way it happened. Incredible. I guess that if a baby born in my stable was a king, then there had to be something in the scriptures about him having a throne or a kingdom. In the Old Testament, I found the answer in the books of Isaiah and Jeremiah. Isaiah was a prophet to Israel about 750 years ago. God gave him much of the information about the promised Messiah. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth even forever. About 120 years later, Jeremiah was sent to be a prophet to Israel. I remembered that Jeremiah had written something about a king to rule our people. God revealed to him these words. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Many years after that amazing night in my stable, a disciple named Luke described the night that Mary had been visited by an angel and told that she was going to have a royal baby. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Not quite like I would have figured it, though. The throne hadn't happened yet. And there was more that needed to be fulfilled before the baby was accepted as a king. But I'll explain that later. As I studied the scriptures, I came upon a prophecy in the book of Isaiah about the birth of the Messiah that seemed so unlikely, so impossible, that I thought for sure God's plan would surely fail. God spoke to Isaiah, saying, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin would conceive and bear a son. I didn't understand. It didn't make sense to me until I read what Matthew wrote so many years later. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us.
the prophecies that the Messiah would be a descendant of David, the mighty king of Israel, were fulfilled. The prophecies that the Messiah would be born to a virgin were fulfilled. But when I found my hometown listed as the place of his birth by the prophet Micah nearly 800 years before it happened, I was shocked. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forths have been from old, from everlasting. Matthew and Luke both told us that the prophecy of Micah was fulfilled when Jesus was born in my stable. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Amazingly, even the shepherds knew that the promised Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Those were those same guys that came by my stable that night. Luke wrote about it. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Beautiful. 
The promises were made hundreds of years ago, but they were fulfilled perfectly. I am completely convinced that the baby that was born in my stable that night so long ago was the Messiah, the promised Son of God. All of a sudden, God didn't seem so far away. the only one searching the scriptures. Several scholars from a far country east of here began studying the scriptures as well. Their studies led them to follow a star all the way to Bethlehem. Matthew wrote about these men. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? 
for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. that Joseph and Mary left town suddenly the same night the wise men began their journey home. Some people said they moved to Egypt. Others said they moved to Nazareth. I continued searching the scriptures for prophecies about the Messiah. It just didn't seem right that he would disappear without restoring our lands and setting up his kingdom. Such a big deal had been made about his birth. The angels, the shepherds, the wise men, Simeon. His birth couldn't be the end of the story. We were still in bondage, and he was supposed to be our deliverer. We were still in sin, and he was supposed to be our savior. Then one day I found a prophecy in the book of Isaiah, and it all came together for me. It all made sense. That baby that arrived in my stable so many years ago that night wasn't born to be a king. He already was a king. He was born to become a sacrifice for me. He is despised and rejected of men, 
a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. It's not just about the the cross. 